Dear students, now we are going to discuss attenuation factor for circular waveguide and its derivation for TE waves and TM waves. In order to determine the electromagnetic field configurations within the waveguide, we have to make two important assumptions. The first one is dielectric material should be lossless. The next one is walls of the waveguide should be perfectly conductive. But in practical case, there will be a finite amount of loss occurred within the waveguide. We cannot ensure the perfect conduction. Correct? So this loss can be represented in terms of attenuation factor. So here the attenuation factor is defined as the ratio of the power loss per unit length to the total power transmitted. It is given as alpha is equal to power loss per unit length divided by 2 into power transmitted within the waveguide. Consider this as the first equation. We are going to find out the attenuation factor for T waves and TM waves. Okay, for that first we are going to find out the total power transmitted and then the power loss. Then we have to substitute both the values in this first equation to get the value of this attenuation factor. So next we are going to derive the attenuation factor for TE and TM waves. So first we are going to find out the total power transmitted through the circular cross section of the waveguide. So here we are going to use pointing vector. So what is pointing vector that is equal to 1 by 2 into E into H. Okay. So here in this circular waveguide we are going to consider axial components of electric and magnetic fields that can be represented like this. So here the power transmitted is equal to 1 by 2 modulus of transmitted electric field and transmitted magnetic field. As we know the relation between E and H, here you can get the value Z S or Z Z. That is nothing but source impedance or wave impedance. From this we can get the value of this E that is equal to Z S into H. We are going to replace this E with the value Z S into H transmitted wave. So here we can get 1 by 2 modulus of transmitted magnetic field the whole squared into Z S. Do you all understand this concept? So this is what the transmitted power through the cross section of the waveguide. We are going to find out the total power transmitted. For that we can take the surface integral over this value. Then the total power transmitted is given as Zs by 2 surface integral of transmitted magnetic field whole square ds. So here this ds is equal to rho into d rho d5. This is the surface integration for cylindrical coordinate system. Okay, here this d rho is having the limits from 0 to a. d5, its value is from 0 to 2 pi. Is that yes is nothing but surface impedance. Rs represents surface resistance. Okay, this transmitted magnetic field in the z direction is produced by the rho component and phi component of the magnetic field, then we can take these two values. Okay, so here the transmitted magnetic field is nothing but what? The addition of rho component and phi component of the magnetic field. Okay, so here the total transmitted power is equal to Zs by 2 integration from 0 to 2 pi integration from 0 to a h rho squared plus h phi squared rho d rho d phi. So we have already derived the values for this h rho and h phi for TE waves as well as TM waves in the previous lecture videos right. So if we are going to substitute those values in this expression and find out the integrated values we can get the exact transmitted power signal okay. So consider this as the second equation. So next we are going to find out the power loss per unit length. Here PL is equal to Rs by 2 surface integration of Js square Ds. Here Js is nothing but surface charge density. Here we are going to consider the loss. Loss means it is due to the resistive component. So here we have to consider 
surface resistance of the wave guide you will understand this one this charge density is nothing but the tangential component of that magnetic field so we have to consider this as the third equation so next we are going to find out the attenuation factor for that we have to substitute the second and third equations in the first equation so here we can get alpha is equal to the power loss per unit length that is the third equation rs by 2 surface integration of so magnetic field square ds divided by zs by 2 double integration of this h rho square plus h phi square rho d rho d phi if we are going to substitute the h rho and h phi values of te and tem waves in this expression we can get the attenuation factor for te and tm waves okay after substituting the h rho h phi values for te waves in the above equation we can get the value as alpha te is equal to rs by a eta into square root of 1 minus fc by f the whole square into fc by f the whole square plus n square h a n m square minus n square so here this h n m is nothing but the mode value n into m. Here for te 0 m waves, 0 means here n. Okay, so n is equal to 0 means in this expression this term becomes 0. Then we can get the value as alpha te 0 m is equal to rs fc by f the whole square divided by a into eta square root of 1 minus fc by f the whole square. So this two are the attenuation factor values for te waves this is for te nm waves this is for te 0 m waves okay so next one is for tm waves okay so in this one we can get the value as rs by a eta into square root of 1 minus fc by f the whole square so these three are the attenuation factor values for this circular wave guide okay so next we are going to discuss the variation of attenuation factor as a function of frequency. So this is the diagram which relates the attenuation factor with its frequency. So here we come to know that the attenuation is very high at this cutoff frequency range. Correct? So once the cutoff frequency range is reached, its value is maximum. So if the frequency is increased at above the cutoff frequency, the attenuation value is getting decreased for both TE and TM waves. Okay, here the attenuation, minimum attenuation occurs at range square root times the cutoff frequency. Still the frequency is increased means then the attenuation is also getting increased. Okay, so here this TE01 wave is having the relation, the attenuation factor decreases with the frequency. At one point, it reaches its minimum value with its frequency, okay? Next one is quality factor. It is a quantity which is closely related to the attenuation factor because the quality factor is inversely proportional to the attenuation factor, okay? So here the quality factor is defined as the ratio of energy stored per unit length to the energy lost per unit length per second. So here quality depends on the energy level. It is represented as Q that is equal to omega multiplied with energy stored per unit length divided by energy last per unit length per second. So here we can get the expression as Q is equal to omega by 2 into alpha C square root of 1 minus Fc by F the whole square. Quality factor is inversely proportional to this attenuation factor. If attenuation increases, then the quality is getting decreased. Do you all understand the relation?